Welcome to Engineering Mechanics Dynamics, and this lesson is on polar coordinates, which is a new reference frame for curvilinear motion. And so now here's our new reference frame. Here's the path of the particle. Instead of like in the normal and tangential, where you have your normal and tangential um, components, we're going to have our, and the origin is, is the particle, we'll have our origin at a set point right there. And then you have your radial component R and your transverse component theta. And so now here is the meat of what you're going to learn. And so here we have our radial component and our transverse component. And so U sub R is the direction of increase in R when theta is held fixed. And U sub theta, which is the transverse direction is the direction of increasing theta when r is held fixed. And the last thing to notice is our position vector, um, which is r in the radial direction. So here's our position vector. And you can tell that that is in the radial direction. And now before we completely jump in, I'm going to talk about um, some definitions. And so now what is theta dot? We know what theta is. So theta dot is the rate of change of theta. Or the angular velocity in radians per second RPM. And so now what do you think that is? Um, it is the angular acceleration. And so we have theta dot, so that's the rate at which this is going around. And we have which is the rate at which it's accelerating when it's going around. And what is r dot? The velocity with respect to r, i.e. dr dt. And so that's the velocity that this r vector is getting longer. And what is r double dot? Well, that's the acceleration with respect to r. And so that's the acceleration at which r is the getting longer. All right, and now we're going to talk about velocity. And we have our polar coordinates. We've got our radial and transverse. So our transverse component of velocity, v sub theta. Radial component of velocity, v sub r. And then we have our total velocity. And how do you bind v sub theta? and v sub r, or your radial and transverse components of velocity. You do this by taking the instantaneous change in r with respect to time, or the derivative with respect to theta of your position vector. And you can take the derivative with respect to theta of your position vector, because your position vector depends on theta. And so let's say theta was here, then our position vector has to be there, because we know the path. And then once you take the derivative, you just use the chain rule, and so your radial component becomes the derivative of r times your radial component. And then transverse is just your r times the derivative of your of the unit vector u sub r to give you that. And now to make some sense out of these, this is just the velocity with respect to r in the radial direction, so that makes sense. And this is kind of like a fan. And so I drew this quasi fan right here. Let's say it's spinning at theta dot. That's its angular velocity. Well, since this R is a lot bigger, it's going to be going a lot faster because each of these arms are going around in the same amount of time. But this one covers a lot more space. And last but not least, we have acceleration. And so once again, polar coordinates, we have our particle with our radial and transverse. And so we have a transverse component of acceleration, a sub theta, and a radial component of acceleration, a sub r, and a total acceleration. And then here's the idea. And so here we have our radial component, and so we have the acceleration of r out minus r times the angular velocity squared plus the transverse component which is r times the angular acceleration 
plus 2 times um, the velocity with respect to r times the angular velocity. And what do all these things have to do with real life or concreteness? Um, so the acceleration of r is just the rate at which r is growing out. This r times the angular velocity squared is related to centripetal acceleration and r times the angular acceleration is like the fan except for now instead of the speed that is going around the ed outside it's the acceleration of which it's speeding up or slowing down or along the outside and then this um, might be a little bit more complicated to think about but imagine a fan that is spinning and its arm is growing. So as its arm grows, the speed at the end of the arm is getting faster and faster because it's going the same speed at the beginning and it's growing at the constant speed, but the speed at the end is constantly getting faster and a change speed is an acceleration. And so that's a transverse acceleration. Here are scalar components, our radial and transverse. All right, now we're going to do an example. And so we have peg P, which is that peg right there. It's driven by the fork length OA, which is the dark blue fork, along the curved path described by R equals 2 theta. And so here's the curved path described by R equals 2 theta. So if 2 theta is 0, it's 0. At the instant where theta equals pi over 4, so right there we have the light blue R, and theta equals pi over 4 right now. Radians, the angular velocity and angular acceleration of the length, are 3 radians per second and 1 radian per second squared, respectively. Determine the magnitude of the peg's acceleration at this instant. So we're given theta, which equals pi over 4, and the angular velocity equals 3 radians per second, and the angular acceleration equals 1 radian per second squared, and r equals 2 theta. Find a magnitude of acceleration. And so since we know all the transverse components. We're going to want to find the other radial components. And so r dot equals 2 theta d and the derivative with respect to theta, which equals 2 theta dot, so 2 times the angular velocity, and then the acceleration with respect to r equals 2 theta dot, or the angular velocity, and the derivative with respect to theta, which will end up equaling 2 times the angular acceleration. So now that we have those, the radial acceleration equals the acceleration of r minus r times the angular velocity squared, and that's going to become 12.14 feet per second squared, and the transverse acceleration equals r times the angular acceleration minus 2 times the velocity with respect to r times the angular velocity, and that equals 37 point five seven feet per second squared. And then you use Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of acceleration. And so A equals A so R squared or the radial component plus the transverse component of acceleration squared. And your total will end up being thirty nine point five feet per second squared. And so like all these calculations, I just solved them for you. You can plug in our double dot, which equals 2 times 1 radian per second squared, which is essentially 2 feet per second squared because the radians are unitless. So that makes sense with units. So you can plug all this stuff in and solve it for yourself. I didn't go through that. Um, hopefully you learned from this lesson. And if you ever have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Thanks.